vintage audio. They really don't make it like they used to. Or do they? Let's talk about it. Now, audio has quite a history. There's a lot of things you can find on the used market and a lot of things that are really obscure and strange. Take my Sony PFR-V1, for example. This is a small set of speakers that hover on the outside of your ears, kind of like a mini version of the AKGK-1000. Or this, well, I don't know if I can call it vintage, but it's one of Odyssey's very early models of the LCD-2. And truth be told, I think it's not like anything you can buy today. Vintage amplifiers, vintage e-stats, there's a whole world of this stuff that's getting really sought after. But is it really any better than the things we have today, or are we just listening through rose-colored glasses? Well, rose-colored headphones? Something like that. Well, I kind of want to take a dive into this and talk about it with you guys. and. I'm curious of your thoughts. So if you have anything that you think you can add to this discussion, leave it in the comments below because I read all of them. So let's get into it. I'm DMS, you're watching The Headphone Show. And today we're talking about vintage hi-fi. Now, the reasons for these products no longer being on the market may be because they were just too strange for consumers at the time. Maybe they were ahead of their time or maybe they had problems. I mean, cassettes, as much as I find them fun, they don't really hold up to a lot of modern media standards. Vinyl's still around and I appreciate it for its quality but I can't pretend like it's perfect either. Here's one that really gets to me though. The Sennheiser HD 580, which was the predecessor to things like the HD 600 and 650. That is a great headphone. A headphone that maybe four or five years ago you could buy on eBay for $80. And at the time, a lot of people said, hey, you know, if you can't afford a 6XX, get this. It's cheaper and it's pretty similar. And I have some friends who bought it for that very reason. But now if you go on eBay, they're almost $600. You go on four forums and discords and the people talking about the HD 580 now say that it was the best thing that Sennheiser ever made. And the truth is, it's very good, but it's not as good as people say it is. I would go so far as to say that if you listen to that and an HD 600 back to back, I don't think that it would be any better than the HD 600, unless a very small tuning difference means the world to you. Now, I'm not here to crap on anybody's opinions, and there's lots of vintage things that are great. The famed Hyphaman HE6. Shockingly good for its technical performance. Most technically impressive headphone under $2,000 that I've heard. This is just ridiculous. Super, super hard to drive headphones. The Hyphman HE6. For example, known for taking an absolute dump truck of power, but sounding fantastic. I will tell you though, oh man, you better be ready to empty out your wallet. The question is, for as great as that headphone is, is it better than everything else modern available at the same price? A few years ago, I saw HE6s on eBay going for $1,600. That is a lot of money for a used headphone. And today I couldn't find any on eBay. $1,600, man, that costs more than an Aria Stealth. That costs more than a Focal Clear. That costs more than a lot of modern Odysseys as well. If it ends up being the exact sound you're after, maybe that is worth it. But the thing is, is that a lot of vintage gear can't really compete with modern gear on technicality. And that isn't always the case, but we're moving into an era where headphones measure better than ever, where they're more comfortable than they ever had been in the past. We have a range of amplifiers that's much more compatible with things, has lower noise floors, way higher performance at lower costs, which isn't always the case. There's some incredible sounding things you can buy that are class A and well, still expensive. So I guess performance is kind of relative there. But I want to relate this back to a topic I covered not too long ago, which was the hedonic treadmill. This tendency we have to want to continuously push for the next thing. We want something better. And you go through a lot of the current market. Well, you might want to start going into vintage hi-fi and the small differences. Sure, they are differences. They account for something. Is it worth paying double the price for an HD650 with a black screen versus a silver screen? Hmm, that's a really hard sell for me because I had a black screen HD650 and I currently have a silver screen HD650. And man, I, I don't think I would pay twice the price for it. But there's ups and downs. As I mentioned, this is an LCD2 Revision 2 and it has Odyssey's old vegan pads on it. You can see it's pretty torn up. It's seen better days. But this, I believe, is one of the best sounding headphones I've ever put on my head. 
headset. I've had this for a while. I spent five years looking for this exact headphone and pad combination. And when I finally got one, I was thrilled. But in a lot of ways, it's not as good as a modern headphone. It is very heavy. It is not very comfortable. And it's very fragile. And not long after I got my hands on this, I got my hands on modern headphones that sound pretty dang close, but have the benefit of being more comfortable, more compatible with a wide range of amplifiers and more well built. I don't even want to go into amplifiers because that's such a big rabbit hole. I do use a vintage amp alongside my regular amps and it does incredible things unless I put something on it super efficient and then I can hear the noise floor just but turning on the amp and hearing the liquid cooled fets inside start bubbling, that's pretty neat. And that is what I think really stands out for Vintage Fi. I think there was a time period where people were trying a lot more interesting things. Things like the K1000, things like a bunch of different stacks models with strange driver positionings, things like this PFR V1 or the early planars that hit the market. They were all very, very unique products because things hadn't been explored as much. They hadn't been narrowed in on like they have been today. Day. And that led to products that while may not be objectively as good and might not be as comfortable or well built, well, they had something very unique that isn't as easy to find in modern equipment. I mean, what can you buy today that sounds like the K1000 or the PFR V1? Well, you could buy the MySphere, but that is a lot of money just for that one sound. And I kind of liked the K1000 more than the MySphere. Don't tell him I said that. I mean, I used to have the Hyphaman HE500, and despite it being incredibly uncomfortable, it was a really good headphone. And even a good headphone by modern standards because of how impactful it was. It is not easy to find a modern planar with the impact that the HE500 had. But it was clunky. It had small and hard pads. The adjustment mechanism couldn't hold its height, and it would slide down over time. And a lot of those pairs had problems. The first one I got in, well, <laughs> the phase was backwards ear to ear and I had to fix it. And the previous owner before that, he was the original owner, which means it came from the factory wired in reverse phase and he just kept it for all those years. The moral of the story is basically this. Vintage Fi can be really cool, but don't oversell it. Was that slightly older revision of the HD650 or HD580 the best thing that's ever hit the market? Probably not. In fact, it's probably not that much better or different than the modern version. In fact, all things considered, the modern version is probably actually slightly better. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the older versions more. If you take anything away from this video, let it be this. A lot of vintage Fi is very overhyped, but you can absolutely enjoy it, and you might like it a lot more than modern equipment. But do a lot of research first. Try and figure out the upsides and the downsides, and don't look at it through rose-colored glasses. This might be the perfect headphone for you, but you might also be the kind of person who wants to wear it for three hours at a time, and I can't wear this for more than 30 minutes. Unless you just have like an extremely resilient skull. I feel like this would leave a bruise if I put it on for that long. But despite that, I continue to collect my vintage Fi and use it alongside my modern equipment. The modern equipment is definitely my daily driver. It's the things that I can never break away from, but on occasion it's nice to sit back and listen to something from the past. Especially to hear something that at the time someone thought, you know what? This. This is something unique. This is the future and this is going to change audio. And a lot of those developments probably did. So I think that's going to wrap up this video. I'm curious to see your thoughts. Let's start a discussion in the comments below. But other than that, if you like this video, leave a like down below. Another comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can at the forums linked in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this. Till the next one, guys. Peace.